Welcome to today's game, everybody, and today's game is a Game of Thrones. It is actually specifically Battles of Westeros, and we are playing an epic battle here. It is the Battle of Blackwater Bay, uh, which is an epic battle partly because it's just really big, and also it's going to be in three parts. So today is the first part of the battle, and what we've got is House Baratheon over here, and they are trying to get across, well, it's maybe, but it's actually a river, I'm not sure exactly. I think this is more of the books than the movie, because of course the movie, or the TV series rather, uh, had to be a big bay, and there were ships and all that sort of thing, but in this you have this sort of river thing, and they're on one side, and they're trying to get across to the other, uh, and the only ships that they have that are working are these. I think the idea is that this is after all of the other ships have been destroyed. So you can see they're all destroyed, but they also have these markers, and these are going to burn through them. And uh, figures can actually get across these, but mostly they need to get across with these boats. They are trying to get across here to House Lannister, who has King's Landing, which is back here. And they even have some catapults back there. And what they have are these forces all along in here. And actually, Baratheon has some here. Uh, let's go ahead and look at what the forces are. Over here, what you have, Baratheon has these archers all along here, and they've got axemen, some axemen back there, and then all along here are uh, the uh, cavalry, and you have the two characters right in here, and those characters are Stannis Baratheon and Bryce Caron. And I don't really know much about Bryce, I'm sure he's important in the series, but we're going to see what they have to do in the book series, rather. Uh, and then over here you have just a whole bunch of Axemen led by Andrew Estermont. You can see what his abilities are there. Over here, you've got uh, archers on these docks, archers on the shore, and I do not mean the series archer, and then you got some spear guys guarding inside of this part of the town, and then a mixture of spearmen and uh, swordsmen, and also actually you can tell by the banners, blue is medium, uh, red is heavy, and green is light. So it's just a real mixture. It's almost like uh, Lannis are just sort of getting whatever they can out there. And then of course green is the archers, they're light. And over here, it's the uh, Baratheon's a little bit more ordered. You have two, uh, two red, two blue over there, and then the archers are green over here with blue and red. Actually, I probably need to get the light adjusted here so we can see all this a little bit better. Uh, it's pretty much the middle of the night right here, but this is going to begin... Oh yeah, let's look at the characters real quick on the Lannister side. So Lannisters have Kevin Lannister, and uh, also the other one is Adam... Well, what is his last name? Marbrand. And again, these characters are probably more important than the books they are in the, in the TV series. Anyway, there's Adam. Uh, he's leading the infantry, and Kevin is leading the uh, cavalry. And they're basically going to try to hold, uh, hold King's Landing as best they can against the Horde. Now, the one thing they have going in their favor, of course, is the fact that uh, Baratheon is mostly across the river. They only have a small contingent over here. The objectives are these four points here. They need to capture a couple of them. So we'll see how it all goes. There they are. Already out to sort of a devastating start, the Lannisters have fired their trebuchets. They're actually trebuchets, not catapults, my mistake. And they got a blue and a green, with green, not grain, uh, which took out a bunch of cavalry. First, they took out the escort that was with uh, Bryce Estermont. I'm sorry, Bryce uh, Caron, that's over there. And they took out two of the three cavalry stands that were right here. So they have already damaged. Uh, 
the uh, Baratheon cavalry before this game has even gotten started. Now on to the Baratheon turn proper. Archers to the marks. Archers! To your marks! Opening shot of the game was appropriately enough. Archers, the Baratheon archers opened up, fired over here, and hit one of these guys on the quay. I learned that it's a quay, not a dock. Uh, actually, when Baratheon rolled to see what uh, uh, what dice they're going to have or what uh, colors they're going to be able to use, they rolled all green. So they're going to have yeah, a lot of archer fire at the beginning of this, which again is appropriate, uh, being that it's the opening volley. Funny enough, Lannister also rolled all greens. Now, what this means is at the beginning of your overall turn. Uh, you roll to see which of these tokens you're going to get, and those are your bonus units you're going to be able to use in addition to the uh, cards that you draw, which is basically commands from your commanders. Uh, so both of them caught all green, which means that uh, their archers are going to shoot at each other a lot, and they did a bit better. They shot and got two of the Baratheon. So that's kind of standard. What do you think, Patches? Patches, being a cat, kind of likes the lions doing uh, extra well, I think. We've skipped ahead slightly because both sides decided to just keep on firing their archers. They moved up others to keep on firing, and you'll notice that Baratheon has lost a unit of archers, and Lannister has almost lost one, but they're holding on. So because Baratheon has lost uh, a unit, they are now losing morale. There was some more archer activity up here, reducing them a little bit, but the main thing that happened over here, Baratheon moved forward, actually more specifically it was Andrew Estermont, and he gives extra toughness and uh, abilities, uh, or actually toughness for defense and toughness for attack to the people he's adjacent to, and they went up and boy howdy did they get tough. Actually, uh, pur purple fists are the hardest things to get, and they almost destroyed that unit with a really mighty stroke. Lannister came back with a heavy attack of three units, and the Baratheon uh, outsmarted them by retreating pack away from them, that, which was a smart move. They were about to get themselves surrounded and flanked, so they got the heck out of there. This unit, though, uh, the one being directly led by Andrew, uh, was hit just a little bit lightly. So we've gotten to the end of the turn, and there's really been just a lot of movement. Uh, these guys tried to attack here, but weren't able to do anything. That is, the Baratheons tried to attack the Lannisters, but weren't able to do anything. The Baratheons, meanwhile, are going over to their ships, and the Lannisters are countering by moving their knights over to get ready for their advance over to their side. The fight this turn begins on this flank, and it began with these Axemen uh, killing one of these stands. However, you may notice all the stands are still there. That is because when it went to Lannister's turn, they got to bring back uh, a unit. So, or they got to bring back a unit per each one that it was ordered. So that one and that one regained some guys, came in and plastered uh, the unit of Andrew, and uh, he is all alone now. And uh, actually, once they killed the last of his uh, command, he got a, a flag to retreat, which, you know, makes sense. It's basically the time when he's like, okay, time to get out of here. The Lannisters just had a great move and a missed opportunity. They uh, used their uh, flag to rally these troops who were back one space, uh, and that means that they're going to be able to move again. And then they had this, order two units, and those units get a plus one if they flank this turn. That meant they moved these guys along with those guys, moved in on this unit, and they managed to take down one stand, but these guys stood their ground, and these guys came in for a flank, rolling six dice. They had the opportunity of a lifetime. Green, 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 green. Actually, that one other that was still not a, not a hit. So it stands with just a really massive strike, uh, and the uh, Baratheons are lucky to get away with just one hit. Oh, also, their archers shot across from over here, and as you can see, they took down one Lannister uh, archer unit. So that's an entire unit gone, so now the uh, morale will go back up to being neutral. <laughs> So we jumped to the end of the turn because the rest was just maneuvering. Uh, it's really turned into a two-prong fight here. Uh, of the Lannisters, Adam is going to the north with these units to stop the crossing, which is uh, beginning now. 
and it's actually the uh, two Baratheon commanders, uh, well, two of the uh, Baratheon commanders, uh, Stannis and Bryce, have now crossed over. It's they're really the two commanders from across the side. Um, so there's that going on. Meanwhile, over here, uh, Kevin is leading the, uh, um, oh, what do you call it, the uh, Lannister uh, command on this particular side, trying to plug the hole from Andrew on the Baratheon side that's trying to get through. Uh, and really, he, the Lannisters have succeeded, at least in terms of uh, holding them up into this little corner. And, and the, the Baratheons, even though they're, it's kind of like, uh, they're both very stubborn and neither side is really uh, gaining a lot of ground, they, the Lannisters have succeeded in not giving them a lot of room for maneuvering. And in fact, it's been hard for Baratheons to move that last unit because of the fact that they're sort of plugged in there. Um, we had forgotten about the wildfire that actually has, not wildfire, but uh, the, uh, I guess it is wildfire. It's, anyway, it's that special green, fire that's going on inside of the water here that is beginning to spread but of course there are Baratheons that are not trying to cross at that you know with out in the open they could try to cross these uh, damaged ships but then when it catches up with them they uh, catch on fire so that really wouldn't be very good for them so here's the battle right now this turn is beginning with action on both fronts first of all the Baratheons uh, their knights have moved forward hit a unit, caused it to retreat back. This way they even used their pursuit, followed them away, didn't kill anybody, but over here they did. They managed to take out one unit. So they are starting to make some room for themselves down here. While the Lannisters, meanwhile, they moved up here. You notice this sort of this wall. Uh, they did a, a card that only Tywin Lannister can do. This is Tywin. Oh, I forgot to mention during Baratheon's turn, actually, Bryce Caron, he has the special ability to choose one commander that's within four spaces and say he has to come just directly towards them. Basically, he's challenging them to a you know face-to-face -face duel. He uh, challenged Tywin. Tywin can only move towards him, which he did, and he brought his uh, his whole force, moving them forward to uh, basically create a wall for anybody coming across. Uh, and the archers have shot down a few of these guys. An extraordinary turn by Baratheon. Bryce has come off of his ship charged into Kevin Lannister and used his special ability to first of all just steal whatever uh, tokens he had on him and he had one so now they have an extra command token but also to utilize his special ability. Oh I'm sorry it wasn't uh, Kevin Lannister it was Adam. He charged Adam uh, Marbrand there and Adam Marbrand has the ability to basically make uh, everything a flank attack so he used that flank attack against them uh, charge him, got rid of his uh, entire escort, uh, and all that was left was Adam himself, so he tried to get away, but they have pursuit, and so they pursued him to the end and took him down, so they have now captured Adam Marbrand. Uh, so uh, the Lannisters have lost one of their two commanders, and it looks like the Baratheons are breaking through up at the top there, so good turn for Baratheon. Lannister answered with a strike to the other front and really mostly just caused them to retreat. They did a bit of damage to uh, the Axemen, but the Axemen ran back before any more damage could be done to them. And Andrew Estermont just pulled a fast one. He played this card, which basically uh, not only ordered a couple of units, but gave them a plus one to attacking. He combined that with flipping his card over, which basically gave him a plus for every unit that was adjacent to him, every unit of knights that was adjacent to him, and look at that, he's right in the middle of it. So his specific unit gets plus two, plus the additional one that's there, plus they get their regular, I think, three dice. So he had six dice to roll, he got three blues, that took out that unit, that really plastered the uh, Lannisters over there. Uh, the ones he was with, though, that he's giving some toughness to, they didn't do quite so well. They uh, slammed into the unit there, had five dice, and did not, or was it four? I guess it was four dice. No, five dice, because they're a red unit, but didn't get any hits. So uh, he did really well, but his friends did not. The Lannisters have answered back with their own kind of fierceness. Kevin Lannister is pushed up next to one of his other units that he just rallied so he could move them again. And he has a bonus specialty where uh, if he gives it to somebody else, his own special ability to someone else, they get plus two dice. So they had plus two to that, 
Plus they were a red unit, so they were already really strong, and they had a bonus from the card they used. So they just wiped out that, uh, that um, Baratheon unit, the one that was, and it's a red unit, so that's one of their, uh, one of their heavy units, the one right next to Andrew Estermont, who's been doing so much. So that is a really uh, strong hit there, and it's now created a gap. You like that there, Patches? Yeah, I think that she likes the uh, fact that the lions are doing something pretty powerful. She was whining a little earlier. And now Stannis Baratheon has taken one of the victory objectives, which is uh, very appropriate, seeing as it's just him. His escort is gone, and he is the one that's uh, leading this attack. So only appropriate for him to uh, claim his kingdom by taking one of the objectives. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, Lannisters have uh, fought back by sending forward one of their units. That Actually, they rallied their unit and moved forward. This is after like a couple of turns. Uh, went right after one of their biggest troubles, which is Andrew Estermont. Attacked him here, but only caused him to retreat back to there. Uh, meanwhile, there's just some other rallying being done and coming close to the end of the turn. And another good move by Baratheon. Uh, actually, the uh, Lannisters have run out of uh, command tokens, and actually they did do one shot over here uh, with their archers, took out one of the stands down here, so they're doing a little bit better on this uh, southern part. But up here, Bryce came back up. Remember, he was over here, but he came running back up here to protect his uh, king, uh, which is right over here. He was at threat of being attacked by two units, but he came back up and he used this card where if it was uh, Bryce being used, which it was, he could eliminate one uh, of their abilities and so he took away their heavy armor. And so he charged in there and the heavy armor would have made those uh, purple fists uh, not, uh, not work. They, they simply wouldn't have been hits. But since he took that ability away from them, it took out two of the stands. This was a full stand, so it took out two of them. Then Stannis Baratheon came in from there and got a full hit in there with, again, another purple fist, which wouldn't have counted without Bryce's help. But since it did, he got that and he got two reds. That took out that stand. That is going to hurt their morale even more. Man, that's really bad from that. Takes it down by three. One, two, three. So they're at the end of the greens there and getting close to surrendering by, uh, by just simply not having the... Uh, morale anymore, which would be the first time I've actually seen that happen. Baratheon started this turn swinging. They get a bonus for anybody who's tough. These units do not naturally get toughness, but because of Andrew, they get the toughness because they were adjacent to him. Uh, they started the turn adjacent to him, and that's all that really mattered. They were flanking a unit that was here. That gave them a huge amount of dice. Uh, these guys attacked, but only caused them to retreat twice. So I guess they just saw this horde coming at them with all these bonuses and went, let's get out of here. These guys then went charging at them, took out one of the units, and that's a heavy unit. So that's uh, going to work against the um, Lannisters. And oh yes, I forgot to mention that these guys have now gotten onto a controlled spot or a uh, victory point. And so if this turn ends with them still on it, it'll end automatically in a Baratheon victory. Actually, this is the last turn, so it's all going to come down to this, whether or not the uh, Lannisters can take, down, take back that spot. Because if they do, they might still be able to win it. And if they don't, Baratheons automatically win this stage of the uh, battle. And once again, the Lannisters answer back with their usual ferocity. Uh, Kevin Lannister used a card to activate three units and uh, gain a unit back. They gained the unit back right there. But he gave a bonus two dice to these guys, which uh, ultimately just caused him to have to pull back. Um, but in getting other guys to move, he had them push forward until they were running off the table. So that took out another uh, Baratheon unit, and they have them backed up practically against the wall. So, uh, the Lannisters are holding them in the southern end, even if they are losing things in the north. But yes, and very important note, that brings the victory point back down there. So, the uh, Lannisters are still holding on in this game. But once again, Stannis and Bryce come in and save the day. They have uh, taken out the unit that was right there, and look at that, just captured a victory point. It just happened to be Stannis once again who gave the killing blow, so he got to come in and take the victory. Yeah, I'm sure that's just coincidence that Stannis just happens to be the guy going in for that victory point. Just have to get 
quick minute close up of the miniature. By the way, I think at the beginning of the game I counted that as being uh, Bryce's unit. That was incorrect. You can see there, they actually kind of look a bit similar. Just one of them has his fist in the air. So yeah, Stannis, who almost got wiped out right at the beginning of the game by a uh, catapult, or rather a uh, trebuchet, uh, has now gone in and taken his second victory point and is going to claim this kingdom. And that will end this first phase of the game with a clear Baratheon victory. Uh, the last little killing blow, uh, Baratheon uh, rallied his troops here. He has this special ability where he can do that uh, with just having um, his command of his. And he also had a card for it as well, uh, but he can do it without taking a morale bo blow also. So he rallied himself and uh, you know his sub-commander who's been helping with everything, uh, Bryce Caron and they went and beat up on some archers. Actually, the archers uh, started it. They shot at them as sort of a desperate uh, attack and did nothing, and so they just beat them up and finished them off on the, uh... oh, actually they were on a, oh no, on the quay. Oh, I guess they had to move over to get it, which they would have gotten another victory point for anyway. Uh, so that is it for this phase. Stay tuned, or rather uh, tune in again next week to see what happens with the second phase of this. But in the meantime, so far it is a breath in victory. Now what happens is everything stays this way it is, and then uh, we both sides have reinforcements. So uh, those reinforcements will be coming in and we will see uh, the battle just continue from there, including a certain short person coming in from a certain secret entrance. Should be interesting. Come on back and uh, see how it turns out. Happy gaming, everybody.